This is Alternate Comms website. I'm Sasha Uzanov, Australian freelance photo journalist and commentator. This is a very, very timely issue that I uh, want to discuss uh, on this uh, podcast. It's the uh, fall of Afghanistan and can the USA ever be trusted? The fall of Afghanistan will have long-lasting repercussions for the US. Put bluntly, can the US ever be trusted by its allies and potential allies? Britain has ruined its excellent post-1949 counterinsurgency war record in Afghanistan for the US. Uh, Australia has damaged the good standing of its own special forces, the SASR, the Special Air Service Regiment, and Canada has lost blood and treasure. I mean, the, the only real strategic winners from the US disaster in Afghanistan will be Germany in the years to come and Pakistan, uh, both ironically US allies. But let's not forget the Af- Afghan people who have suffered and, and the thousands who have also lost their lives. I mean, you've, you've no doubt been moved by the chaotic and desperate scenes as Afghanis uh, have tried to flee the capital, uh, Kabul, on any, any available flight out of the landlocked country. I mean, rising anger and fury is evident on social media almost uh, non-stop at what Afghan supporters of the U.S. see as a betrayal by the U.S. And, you know, we've had the cliched but very accurate comparison with the uh, 1975 fall of Saigon and the U.S. abandonment uh, of its South Vietnamese allies. I mean, for, for 20 years, you know, beginning in 2001, the U.S. led NATO mission battled the Taliban, a, a radical Islamic movement who ruled Afghanistan with a uh, with an iron fist. I mean, beginning in December 2001, the U.S. invaded the country to punish the Taliban regime for harboring the al-Qaeda Islamists and its leader Osama bin Laden, who had orchestrated the uh, terror attack on the American city of New York on, on the 11th of September of that year. The Taliban regime were quickly overwhelmed by enormous U.S. firepower and whatever was left of it uh, melted away to reform and re-energize later. But bin Laden remained elusive, uh, very elusive. Years later, uh, he was killed by a U.S. Special Forces uh, team uh, who had located him hiding in neighboring Pakistan, uh, a, a U.S. ally. A Taliban win in Afghanistan now means that Pakistan will use that ace to play on rival India in the uh, great uh, strategic game in the uh, subcontinent of uh, of Asia and Central Asia. And to shore up flagging support for the US amongst its European allies, uh, Germany via the European Union will probably be called on to play uh, the role of enforcer, you know, tough guy. But other questions uh, that come to mind are, will radical Islamists use Afghanistan as a springboard for terror attacks on the West? Will Russia, China and Iran use uh, Afghanistan as a way of countering the US? I mean, will things eventually settle down and some kind of peace and stability uh, restored? Now, I covered the war in Afghanistan by reporting from that country in 2007, 2008, and 2013, I was part of a Canadian media team led by experienced journalists Scott Taylor and David Pugliese. Uh, we we travelled the diverse country from north and south, spoke to as many leading figures, both Afghani and Western, uh, military and civilian experts, and so on. Uh, you know, we we shot hours and hours and hours of video footage, which was then put together in a two-part documentary series called Outside the Wire for Canadian cable TV. And even those Afghani leaders who supported the US invasion in 2001 expressed doubt uh, in 2008 that the US would win in Afghanistan. Um, now, this is because of the average Afghani's uh, you know, fierce dislike of foreign masters dating back to the, the British Empire in the 19th century to the Soviets in the 1980s when they tried to impose communism upon uh, upon the people of Afghanistan. And, and even now in 2001, the US-led NATO and coalition mission. I mean, simply put, you know, 
you know, regardless of uh, what ethnic group, uh, you know, in Afghanistan, whether it's the uh, majority Pushtun or Tajik or Uzbek, uh, they, they all agree when it comes to uh, uh, a dislike of, uh, of foreigners and foreign masters. Now, uh, you know, uh, in 2008, whilst we were shooting this documentary film, uh, uh, Canadian journalist Scott Taylor interviewed a, a Pushtun warlord called Pachakan Zadran, who in 2008, uh, you know, gave him this uh, incredible uh, quote on video. And, and, and it went, uh, the quote goes, the U.S. is as a blind man walking on a roof. Sooner or later, he will fall off. Now, uh, another Afghan leader uh, called Akbar Bey, who belongs to the uh, Turkmen, uh, very similar to, to the Uzbeks, uh, said something similar in 2008. I mean, in, a, in another interview that Scott Taylor conducted and, and which I uh, videotaped, uh, Akbar Bey said, uh, this war, the West and NATO, they cannot change, cannot win this war. They will lose. They will be running from Afghanistan. If American and NATO soldiers leave Afghanistan at 4 o'clock, at 6 o'clock Karzai, uh, meaning the pro-US Afghan government, will collapse. Um, you know, very, very prophetic words. Uh, the fall of Afghanistan will have far-reaching consequences around the world, uh, including uh, here in Australia, uh, the Asia-Pacific region, and obviously in Europe, uh, but in particular the Balkans. I mean, can U.S. promises of security ever be believed? I mean, is the U.S. sincere or just motivated by its own narrow self-interest? In Macedonia, which is a NATO member, the U.S. refuses to condemn right-wing Albanian neo-Nazi uh, extremism, which poses a very serious threat to Macedonia's security, as it did in 2001 and 2015. I mean... This isn't an encouraging sign from Washington. Macedonia even changed its name, was forced to erase its identity, its history, to please two other key US allies, Greece and Bulgaria. But still the US won't give Macedonia a symbolic guarantee of security. The hated uh, Presper Agreement uh, with Greece and the so-called good neighbourly deal with Bulgaria was signed by Macedonia for U.S. strategic interests, not for Macedonia's benefit. Macedonia has, uh, in effect, given up everything for the U.S., which you know, uh, refuses to give Macedonia a simple security guarantee. Now, the U.S. was willing to spend billions of U.S. taxpayer dollar, dollars, that's right, uh, billions of U.S. taxpayer dollars, fighting a 20-year war in Afghanistan, sacrificing the lives of U.S. soldiers in combat and knowing it couldn't win, and then to ingloriously run away and abandon its Afghan supporters. But at the same time, the U.S. refuses to issue a 20-second soundbite, video clip on social media, not costing a dime of the taxpayer nor the life of a single U.S. combat soldier, to condemn right-wing Albanian neo-Nazi extremists who pose a genuine threat to Macedonia. This can only be described as morally obscene, perverse and downright bizarre. Yes, you, you heard right. I mean, not costing a dime of the taxpayer, nor the life of a US soldier. I mean, it's this arrogant, self-indulgent, you know, spoilt childish uh, behavior which loses the U.S., uh, you know, uh, friends around the globe. I mean, all the, uh, the, the U.S. State Department refuses to instruct um, its ambassador to Macedonia, uh, Ms. Kate Burns, uh, to issue a 20-second soundbite in which she condemns right-wing Albanian neo-Nazi extremism and calls for the removal of World War II Albanian Nazi collaborator statues built in Macedonia post-2006. Uh, you know, these statues serve to radicalise even more existing uh, uh, radical Albanian nationalist ideology in Macedonia. Albanian nationalists are pro-US, and so a warning from the US would be heeded. This costs the US taxpayer absolutely nothing. Yes, you heard it uh, right here, you know. 
it costs the US absolutely nothing. Now, uh, you know, in, in Macedonia, there are World War II Albanian Nazi collaborator statues, uh, which, you know, the US, the European Union, Britain, Germany know all about, but remain deliberately silent because Albanian extremists are strategically important to them. Uh, but, you know, they aren't the only ones who, are, you know, who gain from US uh, patronage. I mean, in a ghoulish and brazen way, US ally Bulgaria could benefit from the US debacle in Afghanistan. The US furious at a loss could vent its anger on tiny Macedonia by forcing uh, the uh, Macedonian government of Prime Minister Zoran Zaev uh, to give in to Bulgaria's outrageous demands for EU entry. Um, you know, but we will have to stay tuned uh, for this uh, to see whether or not uh, that will occur.